In this video of Program and Project Impact Evaluation, we will look at estimating that double difference or the differences within differences that's necessary to estimate that net change or really to get at what is the pure uh, impact of a project on, let's say, change in a particular type of indicator. I think it'd be best to illustrate this graphically, the double difference and overall impact. So the graph in front of you shows uh, really the change in an indicator over time. It's a graph which shows the beginning of a project in which we conducted a baseline. And let's say the indicator is immunization uh, coverage. So at the beginning of the project, our baseline was 25% coverage in immunization. And at the end of the project, uh, three years later, we had 45% coverage in immunization. Thus, if we're going to calculate total change over the period of time, we subtract 25 from 45, that gives us 20 percentage points. So we could say that we had a 20 percentage point increase in immunization over the period of time that the project was implemented. However, in impact evaluation, the question becomes, did the project in and of itself contribute to that total 20 percent increase or gain? This is where having the comparative or control group helps us answer that question. The graph in, uh, that you can see now shows two lines. The blue line showing the baseline and inline for our project participants and showing that immunization increased at 25% during the baseline to 45% at the end of the project. The red line shows a group of children who were not participants in our project, a comparative group in which at the time our project started, they had 25% uh, immunization coverage, and at the end of our project, even though they didn't participate, it still increased to 35% coverage rate in immunization, probably due to other factors. So calculating the difference or the increase in our project participants, coverage changed from 25 to 45%, or a 20 percentage point gain. Now with a control group, it went from 25 to 35%, which is a 10 percentage point gain. Both of these calculations represent that first difference in the double difference. That is, we have a 20 percentage point gain uh, in the project indicator, and we have a 10 percentage point gain over time in the control or comparative group that we have on immunization coverage. Now, to calculate the net change or the pure effect of our project, we have to do the second difference. The second difference uh, involves subtracting what we achieved overall from our project, subtracting that from what was achieved in the non-project area. So to calculate the pure impact or the pure change of our project is that we take the 20% uh, overall gain that we had in immunization coverage for our project area, subtract out that 10 percentage point gain that occurred in non-project areas, and so that we would say the pure effect or that we could contribute to our project is a 10 percentage point gain and not the 20 that we originally calculated. Let's consider another example to estimate the net change or the pure impact that we can attribute to our project. For the sake of time, we'll go ahead and use the same example and the graph in front of you in which we had a 25% uh, immunization coverage at the beginning of the project, the baseline, and then a 45% uh, immunization coverage at the end of the project three years later. So let's calculate that first difference, and again it's a 20 percentage point increase from 25% at the baseline to 45% at the end of the project. But again we still must ask the question, did the project contribute to a 20 percentage point increase in immunization? But in impact evaluation, we want to look at what's that net effect that our project had in immunization rates. So the graph in front of you shows again that 25% coverage at the baseline and the 45% uh, coverage at the end line for our project beneficiaries. But it also shows uh, the same line in a comparative group uh, from a baseline at 25% coverage to 45% coverage at the end line. So in essence, that in non-participants or non-areas, uh, participant areas, coverage rate increased at the same rate as what we achieved in our project area. 
So to calculate the first difference is that we look at the project and there was a change from 25 to 45 percentage points. So there was a 20 percentage point gain. And it is uh, similar to the non-project area. From 25 to 45 percent increase was a 20 percentage point gain. Now to calculate that second difference, or the double difference, is we take the 20 percentage point increase in our project uh, area and the coverage of immunization, and we subtract it from the 20 percentage point increase in immunization and non-project areas. And what we receive is that the pure effect or the net effect of our interventions in increasing uh, immunization is zero is that in non-project areas had the same rate of increase as when we did our interventions. Let's consider one more example to estimate the net change or the impact of a project on immunization coverage. Again, as the graph in front of you shows, it's the same. There's 25% coverage in immunization at the baseline and 45% coverage at the inline, and which then a project would say they had a 20% increase 20 percentage point increase in immunization, but we'd still ask that same question. Did the project contribute to a 20 percentage point increase in immunization over that period of time? But if the project had used a comparative group, a community or area that was similar to them, but without receiving the interventions, and the project area, again as we know, started out with a 25 percent coverage in immunization, at the time the project began, but let's say the comparative area had a 15% coverage in immunization when the project began. To calculate the first difference, we already know is that there was a 20 percentage point increase in our project, from 25% the baseline to 45% coverage at the end line. Now, in the comparative group, and where the interventions did not occur, at the baseline, even though it's different, a 15 percentage uh, 15% coverage in immunization uh, was 35% coverage at the end of the project, even though no interventions had occurred there. So overall is that we have the same for both the project and the non-project areas, a 20 percentage point gain over that period of time. To calculate that second difference, or the double difference, is then we take that 20 percentage point gain from the project and the 20 percentage point gained in the non-project area, the comparative group, is that again, the net effect or the pure impact of our project was zero. Is that in non-project areas and non-intervention areas, the rate of increase in immunization increased at the same rate during that period of time as it did in our project. Going back to the first video on impact evaluation, I had mentioned that there are certain questions that impact evaluation attempts to answer. And then from answering these questions, we can come up with an evidence-based statement the first question that uh, impact evaluation attempts to answer is what is the total amount of change that occurred uh, in a particular indicator over the period of time of our project, that is from the baseline to the inline. In all the examples that we have reviewed in this video, the total amount of change that occurred was a 20 percentage point gain. In each example, there was the baseline of 25 percent and then it increased up to 45 percent at the inline. The second question impact evaluation attempts to answer is what amount of the total change can be attributed to the project interventions or activities, you know, trying to estimate that net change. Now in example one, when we compared the change that occurred during our project over a period of time with a comparative group, we see that the net change was a 10 percentage point gain, not that total of 20 percentage point. But in examples two and three, when we compared our project uh, increase with that of a comparative group is that the net gain was zero in both cases. The third question impact evaluation attempts to answer is that was the net effect that was achieved cost effective compared to what could have been achieved with other intervention or activities. Clearly in example two and three where the net change or net effect was zero, it's not going to be cost effective. But in example number one where the net change is a 10 percentage point gain, and we have to be able to argue, was that 10 percentage point cost effective for the amount of inputs necessary to achieve that? Once we can adequately answer those three questions, we can come up with an evidence-based statement. And, for example, X interventions produce a certain net increase 
given in a given population over a certain period of time, which is the greatest effect for the cost compared to any other interventions known today. We're out of time, so the next video will look at impact evaluation designs.